Good morning, Wellspring. It's good to share this Sunday morning with you. I'm here in sunny Melodon sitting in the garden, so you possibly may hear wood pigeons or other noises, but it's good to share this time with you. What a strange lifestyle we all have at present. So I'm just going to ask you, what sort of things have you been doing? Well, I've shortened two pairs of George's trousers. Now, he says that he's had them in the wardrobe for four years, but I'm sure that that's not true. I've been baking, making and sending cards, and of course, our daily 11 a.m. dance and exercise class with our neighbours from Brintlis, which has not only been on the main ITV news, but also in new newspapers as far afield as China. Through crowdfunding, We've raised £400 for the King's Storehouse and on Friday we completed a Bryn Fleecethon of 26 miles divided between us. There were three routes to choose from, all starting from Bryn Fleece, and we did keep strictly to safe distancing. So far we've raised just short of £3,000 and that will go for specific items in short supply for different wards and departments in Glencluid Hospital. All great fun. It's turned a negative experience into a positive one that will in some way improve things for our NHS and key workers at Glencluid. But do we really want this restricted way of living to be our new normal? Well, the truth is we don't. It's just a distraction making the best of an abnormal lifestyle. But the positive thing is we've become very close to our neighbours, like a family. We do want that to continue. I guess you could call that church without walls. I've really missed you all. And just so you know, I've got a whole load of drugs all stored up ready to give away when we're all living outside of quarantine rules. The first Sunday with no church, I think, was the worst. It was a feeling of being out of sorts. It was breaking the habit of a lifetime of leaving the house on the dot of ten to go to church. But there's no church. No, need, no one needs a lift. No warm greeting on entering church. No live worship. And I really love our wellspring worship because it's so powerful and uplifting. It's easy enough to listen to a good preach through YouTube, but there's nothing like enjoying God's presence with live worship and an excellent preach shared with real people. So the next best thing that came about was Wellspring Family Group and a massive thank you to whoever set it up. We were able to still be in touch, albeit in a different format, but still in touch. And that was when I heard Tempe singing so beautifully. Oh, come to the altar. Mm. The Father's arms are open wide. I heard the words Jesus is calling. And I realised that we don't have to be socially distanced from Jesus. In fact, it's the very opposite. Because he says, draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. She carried on singing, bring your sorrows and trade them for joy, which is what Mark's encouraged us to do over the last two weeks, reminding us of the invitation to cast all our cares upon him because he cares for us. True kingdom living isn't restricted by coronavirus. During these times of lock time, we have the wonderful opportunity to draw close to the one who loved us enough to die for us, to feel loved and to experience true closeness with him. I'd like to read you a verse from Romans 8, verse 38. It's from the New Living Translation. I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Great words. 
and that includes our present restricted way of living where we're cut off and separated from so much but we're not cut off or separated from our way maker our miracle worker the provider of the very air that we breathe to keep us alive so don't be scared or fearful if you've placed your life into God's hands, you're in good hands. To quote an old song, he's got the whole wide world, plus you and me, in his hands. Jesus has made this commitment to us. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. That blesses me and that encourages me. I have to mention something that's really cheered me up during this time, and it's really put a smile on my face and that's the Richard and Susie show. How lovely knowing that we were all being prayed for. Susie Pierce, you are a joy, and we in Wellspring are so blessed to have you as part of our family. Another song that's blessed me on a day when I felt out of sorts was called He Will Hold Me Fast. It's written by Keith and Kristin Getty. I think I did share it on our Wellspring family group. The bridge says, he will hold me fast, he will hold me fast, for my Saviour loves me so, he will hold me fast. And I realised that I could experience so much more than just enjoying a song, or being uplifted by listening to a song. I could actually experience his love, experience his love, not just listen to a song about it. Thankfully, prayer isn't restricted by lockdown either. I'm sure that many of you are waking in the night more than usual. It's quite usual for me to be awake at some point during the night. But when Stephen Landon was so desperately ill on ITU, I was awakened many times during the night. And I entered into what I can only describe as taking a battle stance against the enemy who was using coronavirus as his battle tool using the authority of the one who is above all principality and powers i raised my sword and my battle cry against him well not out loud of course for the sake of the neighbors but nevertheless it was a roar on the inside and do you know the enemy heard it as most of you know steve has now been discharged home to becky and the children but phase two of our praying is for his lungs to be completely healed so that he doesn't need home oxygen and he makes a full and complete um, recovery. He's a fireman, so he needs to be fully recovered. In our present lockdown situation, here's some good advice that I read one morning, and it's from the Apostle Paul, and it was written in a letter to Christian believers in Colossae, bearing in mind that Paul was in prison in Rome, but he didn't allow that to hinder the good news he carried. He couldn't visit any of the churches under his care, so he was really he really was literally in lockdown. So instead, he wrote letters to them. And I'm going to read you two verses now from Colossians 4, verses 2 and 5, again from the New Living Translation. Devote yourselves to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. Live wisely among those who are not believers and make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be gracious and attractive. We're more familiar with or seasoned with salt, but I actually liked the way that it was written in this translation. Let your conversation be gracious and attractive so that you'll have the right response for everyone. And I like the last thing that Paul said in this letter. And he, he spoke it to somebody called Archippus. Now, in our church, we have got an Archie. So if you're listening, good morning, Archie. But this guy was called Archippus. And this is what Paul said. Now, he's written the letter to all the believers in Colossae. The letter then would be passed on to other churches. But he wrote this personally to some guy called Archippus. And he said to him, and I say to you, Archippus, be sure to carry out the ministry the Lord gave you. Now take the advice that Paul gave to Archippus. So whatever your circumstances are, or whatever the change in your circumstances, just be sure to carry out the ministry the Lord gave you, because restriction will not hinder you 
you, it may be in a different format, but again, your ministry it needs to be carried out. So whatever our lives may be like now, or in the future, be assured that God is in control. He's still building his church, and not even the gates of hell will prevail against it. And I just want you to reassure you this morning that our future is bright. Thank you so much for listening. Sorry that I had to use the sheets, but I didn't want to waffle or miss anything out. And you wouldn't have expected anything less than for me to get a bit emotional at some stage. But I'm sure that you'll agree I did manage to hold it together most of the time. So God bless you all. Love you all. Can't wait to see you all.